Epsilon Andromedae is a binary star located 44 light years from Earth in the constellation of Andromeda. The system consists of an F type main sequence star and a smaller red dwarf. Interestingly, the system contains at least three extrasolar planets that have all been named, and all three are likely supergeovian planets that are larger in size than Jupiter. Upsilon Andromedae was both the first multiple planet system to be discovered around a main sequence star and the first multiple planet system known in a multiple star system. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we return to our exoplanet series to consider this fascinating system and imagine what secrets it may contain. So let's get to it. Upsilon is a relatively large star, F-type main sequence of the category F85. Indeed, the star isn't all that different from our Sun in mass at 1.27 solar masses, but its radius, 1.48 solar radii, and its luminosity, 3.57 suns, are substantially more. According to its entry in the Geneva-Copenhagen survey, the star is around 3.1 billion years old, compared to the Sun's 4.6 billion years, and so could potentially have developed life, if not intelligent life within its system. On the positive side, this is indeed helped by the star's slightly unusual nature for an F-type main sequence star, as the amount of ultraviolet radiation received by any planets in the star's habitable zone, usually for F-type stars as much as seven times more, on this occasion is thought to be similar to the actual flux the Earth receives from the Sun. On the negative side, however, X-ray emissions of Upsilon Andromedae A are also low for a star of its spectral class, and unfortunately this means that the star may be moving, or move soon out of the main sequence, and expand its radius to become a red giant star. What this means, of course, is any life within the system currently is about to get a very large, red-coloured jolt indeed. As of 2015, three extrasolar planets designated Upsilon Andromedae B, C and D and also named Safar, Sam and Majoriti, respectively, are believed to be in orbit around Upsilon Andromedae A. All three are likely supergeovian planets, and here we see the approximate locations of the worlds within the system. Safar, designation B, orbits very close into the star at just 0.06 astronomical units, and the world is likely an extremely hot Jupiter-type planet, which life of course would be almost impossible, at least as we know it. Planet C, or SAM, has a potential mass range of 8 to as many as 16 Jupiter masses and orbits at 0.8 astronomical units. This true titan of a planet is however quite eccentric. Indeed, it's even more eccentric than any of the major planets in the solar system, including Pluto, and this high orbital eccentricity may be the result of gravitational perturbations from the planet Upsilon Andromedae d. But curiously, Simulations also suggest that the orbit of this planet does return to its original circular state roughly once every 9,000 years. So Sam, just inside the inner range of the habitable zone on average, could experience wild and extreme temperature fluctuations. And although life on the world itself seems unlikely, there could still be theoretically a number of habitable moons within the system, although most would likely become Venus-style hell worlds. The average temperature range of the planetary system would allow for periods where potential liquid water could exist, albeit briefly, and in fluctuation between freezing and indeed in some cases boiling away. Majriti or Upsilon Andromedae d is also a super Jupiter and has a mass of an estimated 10.25 Jupiters. It orbits at a distance of 2.5 astronomical units and would theoretically be a cooler world than Earth with a temperature of minus 55 degrees Celsius. While Madriti is a gas giant and therefore uninhabitable, like Sam, it may have a moon or moons that are habitable. For a moon in a stable orbit, in the case of Madriti, the orbital period would have to be no greater than 120 days or around four months. If the moon were tidally locked to the planet, which seems likely, it would therefore have a day of around 60 Earth days long at maximum meaning that life would certainly be very, very different to anything we encounter on Earth. Assuming a thick atmosphere, however, the temperature could remain relatively comfortable throughout the day-night cycle, although again, Madriti is quite eccentric in its orbit, so we would expect higher and extremer temperature fluctuations than we might find on Earth. It's thought both Madriti and Sam's peculiar orbits, caused by a cataclysmic event, possibly involving another super Jupiter which has since been thrown out of the system or orbiting now at a huge distance. 
perhaps not unlike the event that turned our own Uranus on its side, but potentially even larger. The orbital parameters of this three-planet system have been fully determined, and the system is thought to be not coplanar or in the same plane with each other, or indeed with the stellar rotation, which adds fuel to the cataclysmic event theory. The existence of further planets too small or distant to detect has also not been ruled out, though the presence of Jupiter-mass planets as close as five astronomical units would make the system unstable. Potential fourth planet, or planet E, was discovered in 2010, and the planet does seem to be in a 3-1 resonance with Madriti, although the planet is far from confirmed to date. If it does exist, Upsilon Andromeda E would have a minimum mass slightly greater than Jupiter's, an orbit at a similar distance to Jupiter from the Sun, at 5.24 astronomical units, and therefore lie outside of the habitable zone. In an exoplanet Hall of Fame, Upsilon Andromeda was both the first multiple planet system to be discovered around a main sequence star, and the first multiple planet system known in a multiple star system, and these three worlds were all discovered before the year 2000. There is also a fainter companion, discovered in 2002, that is the 13th magnitude red dwarf star, believed to have a projected separation of 750 astronomical units. The star is less massive and far less luminous than the Sun, and its age seems to be consistent with that of the system, so it likely forms along with the primary star in the planetary system. The star is small enough and far away enough from Upsilon Andromeda A that its effect on the gravitational stability of the main system remains negligible bit of a future benefit, as the principal star is slowly coming towards the end of its main sequence life, is that the red dwarf star could potentially provide shelter for any intelligent life that may be currently in the principal system. Upsilon Andromeda appears not to have a circumstellar dust disk, similar to the Kuiper belt in our own solar system. This may be the result of perturbations from the companion star, removing material from the outer regions of the system. The interesting Upsilon Andromeda star was ranked 21st in a list of top 100 target stars for NASA's unfortunately now cancelled terrestrial planet finder mission. In today's graphic we find a fictional moon in orbit around the gas giant Madriti. A moon in orbit around the gas giant would have around a 120 day night cycle and we see the inner planet of Safar disappear behind the F-class star and in the outer plane the second world of Sam continues its orbit as the star rises on the horizon. As Madriti slowly descends below the horizon, we could focus on the top left, and in the distance the small red dwarf companion at some 750 astronomical units. If we assume a mid-range M4 star, it would barely hold its own and shine at some minus 9.6 parent magnitudes, which for reference would not even be close to as bright as a full moon from Earth. Upsilon Andromeda is a fascinating three, possibly four world system in orbit around an F-class main sequence star. The three confirmed planets, Safar, Sam and Madriti, are all super Jupiters that could harbour many moons in their own mini-systems. Madriti, the third planet, is thought to be within the habitable zone, but the worlds are bound to very eccentric orbits, which points to a cataclysmic event somewhere in the system's past. In the distance, a faint red dwarf star watches from afar, and Upsilon Andromeda remains one of the very first systems in our vicinity to have planets discovered around it. F-class stars, however, don't hang around forever, and if life is forming or formed within the system, one day it may have to escape the impending red giant doom. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you would like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so. If you have any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, let me know in the comments below and your idea next week could show up. Take really good care of yourselves, look after your friends and family well, and I'll see you on the next one.